Hello and welcome to the second episode of Theater House Profiles in which I document theater houses, their histories, and whatever random fun facts I can find about them. In today's episode, we will be going over Broadway's Winter Garden Theater. Located at 1634 Broadway with 1,526 seats, this theater is known for its shorter and wider proscenium arch that makes it a favorite for big productions and spectacular sets. It's owned by the Schubert Company, and they've owned this venue longer than any of their other venues. It's housed two well-known long runners, Cats and Mamma Mia, and has gone through quite a few renovations over its lifespan. Sure, it's an icon of Broadway now, but did you know that the building itself wasn't always a theater? This theater was originally built as the American Horse Exchange in 1896 by William K. Vanderbilt. When the 1910s came around, horses had phased out to make way for automobiles, and as a result, the American Horse Exchange wasn't needed as a necessity to the city anymore. The Schuberts leased the building, and William Albert Swayze, uh, forgive me if I'm pronouncing his name wrong, redesigned the building as a theater. He designed the interior with an outdoor English garden motif in mind, hence the name Winter Garden, making it the fourth Broadway theater to be christened with that name and was originally built as more of a music hall for review shows. The theater originally had a runway, a trellis ceiling, and walls that were decorated with lattice work. The Winter Garden Theater officially opened on March 10, 1911, with the first of many review shows that it would host in years to come. Jerome Kern's La Belle Paris, starring Al Jolson. Al would go on to become a well-known performer and headliner of the Winter Garden for years to come, for this was the show that helped catapult him into fame. He was more known for performing in Sunday night concerts, where he and Marilyn Miller were promoted. During these Sunday night concerts, Al Jolson would use the theater's runway to prance into the audience, singing and interacting with the audience. Meanwhile, 80 almost nude showgirls would parade onto the runway, which gave the runway the nickname The Bridge of Thighs. Al would continue to perform in shows at the Winter Garden up until 1925, when he performed in Big Boy, his last ever show there. In addition to Al, the Winter Garden was also home to the passing shows, just like how the New Amsterdam was home to the Ziegfeld Follies. The Winter Garden hosted the passing shows from 1912 to 1924, except in 1920. Notable stars of the passing shows include Fred and Adele Astaire, Marilyn Miller, Ed Wynn, Marie Dressler, and the Avon Comedy Four. Believe it or not, Al Jolson never appeared in one of these shows. They were known to be more extravagant and flamboyant than the Ziegfeld Follies. In 1922, the theater got a redesign by Herbert J. Kraft. During this time, the trusses in the theater were covered up, and it got its big marquee. After the passing shows ended, the Winter Garden would go on to host other review shows, like Artists and Models and the Greenwich Village Follies. In 1928, right before the Great Depression hit, the Winter Garden was converted into a movie theater, where it hosted talking pictures from Warner Brothers. However, this wasn't to last for long. In 1933, the Winter Garden became a live theater once again, hosting Hold Your Horses, which was met with mediocre reception. After that, they hosted more review shows, including Life Begins at 840, At Home Abroad with Vincent Minnelli, as well as, believe it or not, the first of the three Ziegfeld Folly shows the Winter Garden would become host to. Florence Ziegfeld was the Schubert's arch rival. And after he died, the Schuberts acquired both the name and the format of the Ziegfeld Follies. Wow. Talk about a win. The Winter Garden hosted the Ziegfeld Follies in 1936. After that, the Winter Garden would house the anti-war show Hooray for What with Ed Wynn, Hell's a Poppin', which would go on to become the longest-running Broadway musical at the time, and Sons of Fun and Laughing Room Only. After those... The theater hosted the Ziegfeld Follies of 1943 and Mexican Hayride. In 1945, an operetta called Marinka was the last show to play at the Winter Garden before it was once again turned into a movie house. But this time, for pictures by United Artists. But that only lasted for three years. In 1948, 
live theater returned to the Winter Garden once again with Bobby Clark's musical As the Girls Go. It is said that this show was a very expensive production, so expensive in fact that tickets were charged a record price of $7.20, and when calculated for inflation in today's numbers, that would be the equivalent of a few cents over $81. That was followed by a burlesque show and two more musicals, and then came a short-lived production of Christopher Marlowe's lesser-known Tamburlaine the Great. It starred Anthony Quayle in the title role and William Shatner in his Broadway debut. A review show, Alive and Kicking, and several more musicals followed, including the original production of Peter Pan. 1957 didn't start off well for the Winter Garden for that was the year the last ever Ziegfeld Follies show was performed. The critics didn't exactly approve of it, and it closed after 23 performances. Don't worry, Winter Garden. Something's coming later in the year. Yep, that's right. West Side Story premiered later that year, and it helped bring the then 27-year-old Stephen Sondheim to the spotlight. From that moment on, the Winter Garden was home to many more wonderful productions, including The Unsinkable Molly Brown, Follies, which won seven Tonys, a musical adaptation of 42nd Street, Pacific Overtures, which brought back the Bridge of Thighs temporarily to give the theater more of a kabuki-style feel, as well as a few revivals, Gilda Radner's personal appearance show, and a few classic plays, notably Christopher Plummer and Othello. And now, we get to one of the Winter Garden's most famous shows. In summer of 1982, after Othello ended its run, the Schuberts gave the Winter Garden yet another renovation, both inside and out. During this renovation, it gained its famous billboard marquee, and the inside was completely disheveled to give it a junkyard appearance, for a good reason. On October 7th, 1982, Cats opened on Broadway. It ran for almost 18 years up until September 10th, 2000, and became the longest-running show in Broadway history. It continued to hold this record up until 2007, when Phantom of the Opera broke its record. Playbill.com reports that this became a favorite of theatergoers, both old and young, and it even helped introduce younger audiences to the theater. I never saw the original production, but I did watch the film version, and boy was it a favorite of mine when I was little. Sure helped introduce me, that's for sure. After Cats closed, the Winter Garden underwent, you guessed it, another refurbishment. Francesca Russo helped to supervise the restoration. Must I add that during this restoration, hay was found under the floorboards, which, of course, was remnants of its American horse exchange days. After a year, the refurbishments were complete. On October 18, 2001, Mamma Mia, a jukebox musical based on the music of ABBA, opened. It ran there until October 19, 2013, when it relocated to the Broadhurst Theater. And so ends the history of the Winter Garden. Now to bring up something that I guess is pointless, but I guess also still an interesting tidbit of history. I don't know. Starting on May 5, 2002, stemming from a licensing agreement, the Winter Garden was temporarily renamed the Cadillac Winter Garden. The name was reverted with back to just the Winter Garden on New Year's Day of 2007. And with that, this episode has come to a close. Join me next time when I talk about the smallest theater on Broadway. Until next time, guys. Bye.